everyone. It's time for Tammy's Take. Once again, here on the Crown City Network, Tammy's Take is the crossroads of politics and pop culture. I'm Tammy Devine. This is my take. Take it or leave it. I hope you'll take it to heart. Today, it's all about Prop 64, the adult use of marijuana on the ballot November 8th in California. It's based on recognized best practices to control, regulate, and tax responsible adult use, sale, and cultivation of marijuana in California. I think that's probably what the ballot measure says. We'll talk about that. What are the dangers of using marijuana? We want to get into that. And it, isn't it a gateway drug? Also, why is this on the ballot? And has it helped or hurt other states, whether it's medicinal or not? Are there some benefits maybe to it? With me to unpack all of this is local Pasadena attorney Philip Cobell. And Philip and I are good friends. We go way back here in Pasadena. Yep. Um, you've been on the show before in the past, not very recently though. So mm -hmm. we need to get you back, well, back you here on the set. Thanks for being here. Yeah. All right. So let's just start off with the issue about you know marijuana being a gateway drug. Isn't it dangerous? It's a it's a narc. I mean, it's, it's a narcotic. It's a drug. And just a, a few years ago, there was some serious prosecution of people, um, you know, having marijuana, trafficking marijuana, growing marijuana, and all of that. And now, um, under Obama's reign, it's kind of all come to a standstill with uh, with um, uh, prosecuting, I guess, of, of these drug drug um, issues. Well, that's a very interesting point, Tammy. Um, the reality is that in California, uh, uh, you probably can't remember this, but because uh, I certainly because I'm so young. It. Is no, that what it, you're saying? But oh. the medical marijuana <laughs> use, Prop 215, passed in 1996, 20 oh. years ago, and so California has had legal marijuana for 20 years. Um, and, and yes, people have been prosecuted operating under the rules of California's legal marijuana uh, uh, laws. Um, what's fascinating is that it really wasn't Obama that changed the, the, uh, the enforcement, the federal enforcement against state laws. The federal enforcement is due to a con the Controlled St Substances Act, which lists uh, marijuana as one of the controlled substances. So it's illegal, even if it's medical marijuana, it's illegal under federal law mm -hmm. to possess, use, and distribute, and cultivate marijuana. This is why it's so confusing, it's Philip. Very confusing. I mean, come on. You can be arrested by the feds, but California would be like, eh, that's okay. Well, I mean, there's got to be some, you so, know, coming together. <laughs> well, and it's it's it you know as an attorney, it's very fascinating because it's the it's the interaction between federal law and state law, which is the same thing that founded our country, the federalism versus uh, state uh, setting up states. It's also the same thing that started the Civil War. Uh, whether federal law was going to prevail over individual states. Oh, please, holding let's not have a civil war over marijuana, okay? But that's, but that's but what we're seeing here. And in fact, what's happened just last month, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is just below the Supreme Court, ruled that the federal government, the Department of Justice, is not allowed to spend money on attorneys to prosecute people under the Federal Controlled Substances Act as long as they're uh, cooperating with, uh, as, as long as they're strictly complying with California law. And this is, I think, you know, a point where I might want to start to take issue with you. The thing that's important... Issue with me? Oh, what? no, just a bit. <laughs> On Tammy's take? But the thing, no, that's, that's okay. the thing that's very important about each of these laws is this word strict compliance, uh -huh. okay? And the way I see it is that there's been essentially no compliance. There's been no regulation of, of, of marijuana use um, and very little regulation even of medical marijuana use. But who, who gets to decide that it was dangerous before? No, not so dangerous. The voters get to decide. That's yeah, and the that's, extraordinary it's, it's, thing. They've decided it in four states, is it? I Colorado, think so, right. I think, was the main, you know, leader. I think it's also Alaska, Washington, and Oregon, and Guam, maybe. Um, but uh, Colorado is the recent one in 2012, and it's amazing what's happened in Colorado, right? Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, how it's impacted the other states that it's been in, and we can basically focus on, on Colorado there. You okay. have some stats, and I want to hear those stats about the income, I guess, from legalized marijuana. Right, so um, in Colorado, of course, in 2011, there was no economy, like, no cannabis economy at all. So we can fairly state that, I mean, obviously there probably was illegal uh, economy of marijuana, <laughs> but from a legal perspective, the, the economy was at zero. So we have a baseline of zero. 
by now, in this year, they're projecting that sales in, in marijuana, of, uh, uh, in, of, in Colorado, of marijuana products and mar marijuana derivatives or cannabis products um, is going to top a billion dollars. Wow. And, the, and the, the, the monthly sales for July are over $117 million. And that's bringing nearly $20 million a month into the, rev into the coffers of the... I wish there was a way to compare the illegal use of it and, and you know how much income that generated versus the legal use of it. But I guess we'll yeah. never know because when it's illegal, nobody's you know, gonna put those numbers down, I well, guess. Well, there are people that have done that. I, you know, I, there are people that study the economy of the, of the so-called black market or the illegal market, but I think that question is gonna change radically in two months, in 41 days. For today, you can't imagine having a conversation even like this mm -hmm. at the dinner table. Right. You know, the idea of teenagers and parents for example, even talking about marijuana at the dinner table is absolutely absurd and out of the question. Nobody is doing that. In 41 that days, this is going to be legal to use, cultivate, distribute, well, and possess. Well, if, if the voters voted in, right, in California. The polls are very favorable towards voting it in. It's, 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 uh, as I was just looking at the different ballot initiatives, it's the highest ranking favorable poll. Uh -huh. And that's and that's and it's been oh, tried many yeah. times, but there's also an important legislative uh, cue that set this up. In uh, effective at the beginning of this year, January 1st, 2016, the California legislature, after 20 years of doing nothing, finally set up some regulations for the medical marijuana industry. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly the same model that is being used for the personal so, uh, use. We need, we need to talk about that. I mean, with the medical marijuana uh, industry, there it's, it's horrible. It's horrible, Philip, in, in, in California. You go to these dispensaries or even the neighborhood around the dispensaries, um, there's crime, there's litter, there's drug addicts all over, and doctors are not being held accountable um, because they are, they are just giving prescriptions pretty much willy-nilly a lot of times. I won't say everybody is, because I don't know everybody, but a lot of times they're just handing out prescriptions like candy, and people are being impacted. The areas around medical marijuana disp dispensers are being impacted. Um, there was an article in the Wave newspapers recently saying that um, uh, council people like in Compton, a councilwoman, one councilwoman at least in Compton is complaining about it because um, because it's got just so much, so much, hor so many horrible issues around these medical marijuana dispensaries, and some of them are, are even popping up like close to schools and, and places that they shouldn't be. Well, this does not look good. You know, and, and that, I think, is what is about to change, okay? I mean, when you don't regulate a commodity that everyone is using, and you don't... Not uh, everyone. Everyone is not using many it. Many people are <laughs> using marijuana. Many people that you know are probably using marijuana. Um, and they can't really talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's illegal. Right. And so that's what I mean by, you know, many people are using it. Now you're going to have, everything has to be out in the open or else you may face federal prosecution, mm. even if you're trying to comply. If you don't strictly comply, and, and, be, and to be clear, this congressional thing that they passed to make sure that the Department of Justice can't spend money to prosecute is only related to medical marijuana. So literally, it's going to be illegal federally still for, for personal use or so-called recreational use. But that is going to change because, you know, for one example is that there's strict prohibitions as to where a dispensary can be located and it can't be within 600 feet or 1,000 feet they're, of the school. They're bucking those prohibitions. They're not really. And, that's, and this is what I think has is, is been problematic is that, is that because there has been no state control like everything else, um, there, you know, it's, it, can you imagine this idea? that instead of having, even though we hate the Department of Motor Vehicles and DMV, <laughs> but could you imagine every single town having their own version of a DMV? That would be crazy. But Why? That's a, I, you know what? Honestly, I'd like, to, I'd like to, to check that out. You know, it's the same argument with the Department of Education and things like that. Do we take it to the states or do we let the federal government handle it? What we've seen in almost every case out there is when the federal gets involved, things get really, really messy, which is part of why the founders put it in the Constitution that, you know, a lot of, uh, didn't put some things in the Constitution, but said those things are not in the Constitution the states need to handle. Well, I agree it's absolutely messy from a, from a federal perspective. And if I was a small business owner 
going into the cannabis industry starting November 9th. Are you going to do that? <laughs> I'm just suggesting that everyone you know is going to be doing that. Everyone in this room is going to be doing no, that. All of our viewers think, are going to be doing I'm not going to. I'm not going to start a new cannabis shop. I'm let, sorry. Not going to do it. But let's look at the numbers here. A billion dollars in three years. The industry grew from zero in Colorado to a billion dollars in three years. California's economy is 10 times the size of Colorado's. California has 10 times as many people, and you know we have a lot more a uh, arable land in California. There's people growing things here. Okay, so you're, you're for it. You think it's going to bring in so much money. It's just going to make California boom economically. But the thing about it is that it can't be all about the money. Um, you, you know, know I, you, let, me, let me put it this way. I am for it the same way anybody that was thinking about the gold rush is oh, for or against the gold rush. If you the know, gold is in California, people are going rush. to rush. You're, well, people are going to rush here. Maybe some people will rush here for marijuana, but it is not comparable at all because crime comes with the legalization of marijuana. I think it's the, the opposite. The number of crimes in Denver grew by about 44% uh, uh, since 2012, the year when Colorado passed the recreational marijuana legalization is, is uh, uh, one of the stats that um, uh, producer Tanya was able to find for me about that. And not sure if it's all due to marijuana, but I think we can connect the dots that probably a lot of it has to do with the use of marijuana. There's dangers. You know, there, students are in, 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 in people who could be... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Citizens, you know, that that are contributing to society, are sitting on the couch smoking marijuana and not doing anything. Uh, um, you know, even when it's illegal, now when it's legal, it's like, hey, the law says I can do it, you know, and they won't be able to reach their full potential. And for that, I think that this is dangerous, mm -hmm. and it's going to cause crime to increase. Well, I, I, you know, I can't speak to the to the dangers of it. Um, I, you know, the only thing that I have any concerns about personally is is around youth using it. And I think today, when you have no regulation, you have no organization of it, and you have essentially a clandestine economy of of people uh, distributing marijuana, I think youth have the same access to it as any any uh, adult does. I think in the future, just like we, cigarettes, just like alcohol. But, th but think about it: if you're a, an adult in a convenience store and you see the uh, the shop guy selling cigarettes to a 19 or to a 16 year old or selling alcohol to an 18 year old you know that's wrong and you say hey you can't do that and you actually can speak up and uh, you know about that and you can enforce the laws as a private citizen even is it going to be 21 then it's 21 okay it's California. 21 so I mean, there's going to be a lot of college students are, that are going to be disappointed by this law. Um, because <laughs> Some freshmen are going to be like, man, why can't you do it and I can't do it? Exactly. But, <laughs> but either way, I think it's bad all around. I do believe it's a gateway drug. I think it has hurt a lot of people, and I think it will continue to hurt people. I don't think there's any medical foundation for those opinions. But uh. But if you're a doctor, and then, you <laughs> okay, know, I'm not a doctor, you, but you know what? I've seen the stories. Okay, yeah. I've heard. Well, the I mean, stories. I think you know. Here, here's. I just saw an example today. The Mar uh, Colorado is taking it quite kind of tongue-in-cheek the whole thing and so they actually started a study a, a, a public health study that they call Cush um, which is kind of a funny word um, and it says it's for cannabis unit surveys of health this is actually on Cush. the governor this is actually on the governor's website this survey you can go to the governor of, of Colorado's website and do this online survey about what the effects have been so they're actually beginning to study the direct health effects with people's input without fear of illegality and so on. So you know, I think, I I think it's only going to get better. I think it has helped some people medically. I think I can give that. Absolutely. But honestly, um, I think it's probably hurt a lot more people than it's helped. And uh, I don't have the numbers to back that up, but I, well, this is my belief. Right. And I'm allowed to have that. You certainly are. <laughs> uh, real fast, we're way over our time, but um, who's going to be more, who's going to be better with this? Well, better, I guess, is relative. Who's going to be tougher on marijuana use and who's going to be less tough on marijuana use, Trump or Clinton? Well, I think the only thing we need from the federal government is some predictability, okay? And there's one candidate that is somewhat predictable, and there's another candidate <laughs> that is completely unpredictable. Mm, who is Philip saying <laughs> is predictable it, it's not just, predictable? It's just mm. frightening to imagine how, uh, you know, a, a person with the power and authority of the president 
um, could, could just wreak havoc on any structure or systems that he may want to, to do. And he, I, I think he said he. <laughs> All right. I think that, we know who he's talking about. He's yeah. not, he doesn't want to say Trump's name, but we know who he's talking about. I, I'm so a little you tired think, of think... hearing it over and over again, <laughs> that's for sure. All right. Well, he says he's going to be the law and order president, so maybe he's going to be tougher on marijuana use. Well, than, you know, the, then hopefully he will try to follow the, the, the laws of the, that the people of California are, are most likely to vote in uh, on November 8th and allow the state of California to make its own decisions and grow what is easily going to be, in a few years' time, Tammy, a $10 billion per year legal industry. And we will billion. have to spend it on the ill effects that it brings. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm going to take the last word on that. I'll give you the last word. We'll see. Thank the last you. word comes to the voters on November 8th. Okay, you get the last word on it. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much, Philip, for being here. That's it My for pleasure. our Tammy's Take here on the Crown City Network. Watch us online at crowncitynews.com. And don't forget to catch CCN Sunrise on KVMD Saturday, 6 a.m. and Sundays, 5 a.m. Also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time.